What's up everybody, this is Mike Henderson, also known as DJ Endo. I'm a DJ product specialist for Native Instruments and an instructor at DubSpot. I train artists on how to use Traktor to take their art form to the next level. Hip hop DJs like Grandmaster Flash, DJ Scribble, house DJs such as Victor Calderon, Dubfire, Pete Tong, Felix the House Cat. And in this four part series, I'm gonna talk about how to configure all of your preferences inside of Traktor and also walk you through each setting inside the preferences so you can troubleshoot and also customize your own personal tractor setup. Let's get into it. To get to the tractor preferences, click on the preferences icon, which is the gear icon in the upper right hand side of the screen. If you're just getting started with tractor, I'd recommend using the setup wizard. The setup wizard is great for getting started with tractor and will help you configure a lot of your audio, MIDI, screen layouts, and other preferences for the way you DJ. If you already have custom settings loaded, I don't recommend using the setup wizard because it will overwrite your settings to Traktor's default values. Here's how to use the setup wizard. In the bottom left-hand corner of the preferences window, there's a button to start the setup wizard. The first thing you're gonna do is connect everything that you're gonna use when you DJ, including your sound card and any controllers to your computer, then click next. Then you're going to choose if you're using an external controller and select what manufacturer makes the controller. After you've selected what kind of controller you're using, the next thing you're going to do is choose what kind of deck layout you're going to use. You can choose from a combination of track decks, sample decks, scratchable track decks, and live inputs. When you're done, the setup wizard will tell you what your tractor setup will be. If everything looks good, click finish and everything will be configured for you. In the bottom left hand corner of the preferences window, there's import and export buttons. This is where you can save or load your tractor settings such as key commands, MIDI and controller mappings, screen layouts, and also things like your playlist shortcuts, effects settings, and even some of your preferences, file paths, and broadcasting settings. To import settings, click on the import button at the bottom of the screen, then load the file that you want to import and choose which settings you'd like to import. To export or save your settings, click on the export button and choose which categories you'd like to save. Just note that if you're importing and exporting MIDI mappings or keyboard mappings, it's best to do this in the controller manager and not by using the import and export buttons since this can possibly overwrite your other tractor mappings. When getting your sound card set up to play in Traktor, or to troubleshoot any sound issues, there are three very important sections of the preferences to check. They are the audio setup window, the output routing, and input routing tabs. In the audio device menu, this is where you choose what sound card you're using, such as the Traktor Audio 10 or Traktor Control S4. If you don't have a sound card connected, you can always use your computer's built-in sound card. Below the audio device menu, you can choose your sample rate and latency settings. The recommended settings for using Traktor on most MacBook Pros is 44 100Hz sample rate and 512 milliseconds latency. If you're a turntablist, you might want to use a lower latency setting. It's worth noting that a lower latency will give you a quicker response, but it will stress your computer more and possibly cause audio dropouts. So just keep an eye on your CPU meters when using Traktor. If the CPU meter is going in the reds, you might need to raise your latency. The Phono Line section is for users of the Audio 8 DJ and the Audio 4 DJ. This is where you can choose if you're using Time Code Vinyl Control, which is Phono, or CD Time Control, which is Line. If you're using the new generation of audio interfaces such as the Traktor Audio 10 or Traktor Audio 6, you have to configure your inputs using the Audio 10 or Audio 6 settings tool located in Applications Native Instruments. The routing tab lets you reroute the channels within Traktor. This is useful if you accidentally plugged in your RCA cables backwards and want to switch the routing without having to re-plug everything. While this is useful, it's the best practice to make sure everything's plugged in correctly in the first place. The multi-core section will let you turn on or off the multi-core functionality of Traktor, but be careful with this one. If you're running Traktor and only Traktor and have multi-core processing on your computer, then turn this on. If you're using other real-time applications with Traktor or don't have multi-core processing on your computer, make sure this is turned off as this can cause CPU issues. The Output Routing tab is where you can configure the signal path from Traktor to your audio interface. 
In this example, you can see that deck A is plugged into the line input for channel 1, deck B is plugged into channel 2, deck C is plugged into channel 3, and deck D is plugged into channel 4, and they can all be plugged into either line or CD inputs. Before configuring your output routing, you have to select what mixing mode you want to use. If you're using an external DJ mixer, such as a DJM900, you would choose external mixing mode. If you're using Traktor's internal mixer, you would choose internal mixing mode. This is good if you're using Traktor Control S4, or you only use your computer's mouse and keyboard to control Traktor's internal mixer. One of the new features in Traktor Pro 2 that's really handy is the ability to combine outputs. So you can actually share the same output of two different decks on the same channel of your audio interface. For example, if you have a two-channel mixer, you can run a deck and sample deck through the same channel on your DJ mixer. If you're using internal mixing mode, you can select the output for the monitor output and your master output. The monitor output is where you can pre-listen and cue tracks in your headphones, and the master output is where the house signal will come out of. The recording output is used to send the master output to an additional recording device or mixer input. Here's a couple examples of some good output routings. In example 1, I'm using the Traktor Audio 10 with four decks and an additional channel for send and return effects or a microphone output. Notice how I combine deck D and Traktor's preview deck onto the same channel so I can either use the preview player or a track on channel D. In example 2, I'm using Traktor's internal mixer with the Audio 2 DJ. Notice how the master output is coming out of channel A and the monitor output is coming out of channel B. The input routing section is where you can select the inputs for each deck and it will also show you if you're getting signal on that input. Here's an example of an input setup using a Traktor Audio 10 with up to four available turntable or CD inputs and an additional channel for a microphone or send effects input. The MIDI clock section is where you can choose to send MIDI clock to external devices such as Machine, Ableton Live, or anything else that can send and receive MIDI clock. To start sending MIDI, select the checkbox for Send MIDI Clock. If you'd like, you can offset the MIDI clock signal to add a delay to your MIDI clock. This is useful if you're trying to sync two Traktor systems. The Timecode Setup window is where you can configure Traktor for using with Timecode Vinyl or Timecode CDs. These options are only available if you own a scratch version of Traktor. Here's what all the options do in this window. The timecode input section is where you can see the signal coming in from your turntables or CD players. If the signal is a complete circle, then you have a healthy signal coming in. If it's a horizontal or vertical line, it means a channel isn't plugged in. If it's a square or small circle, you need to select the correct input mode such as phono or line. The decoder gain will show you the volume of your timecode input signal. The higher the volume, the better your tracking will be. The track start position is where you can choose what location on the record corresponds to the beginning of the track and tractor. If the beginning of your timecode vinyl is worn out, you can use this option to make the start point further in on your record. The turntable speed option is where you can choose 33 or 45 RPM vinyl handling. If you choose 45, you'll have to put the turntable on 45 RPM or rotations per minute. Load Next Track When Flipping Record is a feature where you can load the next track in a playlist when you flip the record over. This feature is handy for battle DJs who have planned routines who don't want to go to the computer each time they want to load the next track. Use Playlist Scrolling Zone is another fun feature where you can actually use the timecode vinyl or timecode CDs to scroll through your tracks and tractors browser. If you're using timecode vinyl control, you would use the innermost grooves on the record to scroll through your tracks. If you're using timecode CDs, you can use track 3 of the Traktor CD to scroll through your browser. If switch to absolute mode on lead-in is enabled, if you use vinyl when you place the needle on the outermost part of the record, which is called the lead-in, Traktor will switch the playback mode to absolute mode automatically. If you use CDs, switching Traktor's timecode CD to track 1 will switch the playback mode of that deck to absolute mode. If you have switch to absolute mode when loading enabled, this will switch the playback mode of the deck to absolute mode when you load a track. 
This is handy for those who are used to playing actual vinyl or CDs who want the time of the track to match where they place the needle on the record. If you're using controllers, relative mode, or DJ with a mouse, I would leave this option turned off since you'll have to keep switching the playback mode for each track that you load. So that was part one on how to configure your audio and time code settings. Stay tuned for part two on loading and transport settings. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.